Hey, yo, what's going on, bro? Once again, bros, women, bronies, and peggy sisters, otaku, siki, kimonos out there. This is the one, the only, of course, Mr. Nintendo Sony for 2011, aka Chrism Guy 2009. And of course, you guys all know all the rest of the intro to this channel. Definitely check out freaknetwork.com. Of course, Trump knows who's on it. If any people are interested in that business part of the program, best part of the program, best part of the program, Links to the description below down below. It's Asian outside. If any people are interested in that business part of the program, best part of the program, all the good stuff. And on, um, without further ado, let's begin. There's a shit ton of... <laughs> A lot of important news this week, especially if you're a Nintendo fanboy, fangirl, fan guy, fan lady, like I am. <laughs> oh, holy shit. <laughs> oh man, there was a lot of news, especially this past Wednesday and Thursday, which unfortunately I really can't make videos like I used to at that time anymore because I have a lot of fucking overtime at work and just real life got in the way <laughs> immensely. I mean, I would have did this video a lot earlier, because, but due to the fact I had a couple technical issues and my fucking um, goddamn service provider... ISP started fucking around with me and I, it took about four or five hours until I got my fucking internet back and I had to call them and rant and scream at my top of my goddamn fucking lungs because I was really fucking pissed off. It was that along with there was a real big thunder lightning storm that was going on earlier so that was another third reason I couldn't do the video earlier today. That's why I have to do it at night. <laughs> so that was a pain in the fucking ass. Luckily it gets up to like 7.30 or 7.40 it's starting to get a lot darker a lot later so by the time it's june july august it should be like 8 30 or 9 when the sun's finally down thank god <laughs> so there was that oh and another technical issue i almost <laughs> spilled water on my fucking mouse controller pad that really really would have sucked ass but um luckily it was okay those are the four big fucking goddamn issues i had to make this fucking youtube video so anyways ladies and gentlemen without further ado let's begin you already see the issue that i'm gonna talk about today the issues <laughs> All the news has been coming out for the past four or five days since I've been gone. But, here it is. So, um, all the four articles I'm going to read to you, two of them are from um, Nintendo Life. The other one's from Polygon, and then the last one will be from VG247.com. I never heard of those guys before, but shout out to them anyways. And, uh, yeah, let's get on with the rumors real quick. <laughs> and then the other one's going to be separate, the Treehouse event thing. I'm going to do that in a separate, smaller video, so stay tuned for that if any people are interested in that type of... Um, article session review comments commentary on that and all the videos for all four of the links will be in the will be um handed to you in the description box down below <laughs> providing the description box down below ladies and gentlemen anyways the first one comes from damien mcferrin so shout out to him for making this one it only came out yesterday so it says rumors rom chip maker macronix i think it's been macronix macronix i ever say it drops hints that the nintendo could be abandoning optical storages the nx ak they're going to take out disc and replace them with Old school cartridges like the one you see back there. <laughs> That's crazy as fuck if it actually happens. But here we go. So it says one of the earliest Nintendo NX rumors was that the system would be abandoned optical optical disc for game storages. It may even be more towards a totally download downloadable base delivery mechanism. However, fresh speculation promoted by comments made by Macronix, the company who traditionally supplies Nintendo with its ROM chips, suggests that the firm <clears throat> that the firm could use op cartridges for the game cards like the NX, but like like what it does for the NX. And it says, "quote Japanese financial website MoneyLinks source films of this rumor." And it's indicated that Micronix is expecting a bumper period of growth around the same time until the NX launches. And this is their own little words right here. Micronix ROM chips are usually supplied to video game console makers. Nintendo, although the sales in its turnoff season during its first quarter to the revenue simply compared with the same period last year. Wu Ming suggests that as Nintendo has just announced that it will release a new generation consoles this March of this year, and the consoles will be launched at the same time in Japan, America, and Europe. So, ROM sales is, ex is expected to increase in the later half of this year and will have a large growth potential. And then it goes on to say the other thing. Now, this is unquote now. Any shift of the change for Macronix, or Macronix, however you want to pronounce that, bottom line would traditionally be attributed towards the Nintendo 3DS. But the company recently began testing a newer line of 32NM ROM chips. Nintendo 3DS uses 75NMs, max 8 gigabyte storages, in parentheses. So it's fair to assume that these new cards won't be existing won't be existing handheld. While it's little more than speculation, some are assuming that the new car the newer cards, excuse me, are intended for the NX. 
And there's a big giant article thing you can read there. I'm not going to read that part. I'll read the other one, though. Given that we still don't know what form or forms the Nintendo NX will take, it's interesting to note that Nintendo could potentially shift back towards its ROM-based media. Let's take that with a grain of salt, ladies and gentlemen. There's only rumors and speculations. This is no confirmation. Thank God it fucking ain't. That would just really suck ass. <clears throat> it's not a move that is totally without persic. Per I've never seen that word ever. The thing is predecence. Precedence. Falling prices are improved storage's capability allowed Sony to shift from optical media onto the PSP to small flashcards on the PS Vita. Although... If the rumors regarding a portable element of the NX are true, it would make more sense for games to be supplied in cards as this would be impractical on a mobile device. There's also the fact that the removal of an optical drive would reduce the manufacturing of costs of each Nintendo con NX console. And Nintendo has been known to make the point out that the NX will not, and it says this in red lines, and this is super serious, not be sold at a loss. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Dramatic reaction on that. And let's get on to the other one. This is a real super short one. I'm not going to get too much deep into it because I haven't played the game myself. But it is from Game Freak. Same people that made Pokemon and four other Japanese games. One that was only strictly in Japan and three of them actually came over here in the United States. They didn't get that huge. It was kind of like Warrior Wear and Rhythm Heaven. If any people ever play those Nintendo games, you know what the hell I'm talking about. So it's kind of like this a little bit. And it's kind of fused with Angry Birds. I don't know why. I get that vibe from it. So this one's from Griffith McElroy from Polygod.com. And this is the little uh, thing, article session review here. I'm going to read all four of them. When I'm done, I'll give my overall thoughts, views, and opinions on every single one. This is from May 4th of 2016. So it says, I can't stop playing Pocket Card Jockey, the 3DS Solitaire Horse Racing Game. It says, watch on YouTube, subscribe to Polygon on YouTube. Yeah, I guess you could if you want. <laughs> you can watch the video yourself. I've seen it already a thousand times. And the game explains one, too. I'm going to have to do a two-part in this video. I apologize if I do it in advance, ladies and gentlemen. Just saying, just putting it out there. Don't kill the messenger. I'm just reading articles. I'm playing average, ordinary guy. So it says, <clears throat> from the start of the article, it says, Park, Pocket Car, it's almost said parkour. Parkour has nothing to do with this shit. <laughs> Pocket Car Jockey is a game about playing solitaire to make it, to make race horses go fast. A cocktail which is absolutely in, incrustable. And structurable, excuse me. Punishing and potentially even more difficult than an actual horse racing game. Although I absolutely cannot stop playing it, it got some st <laughs> it's got some sticky hooks, which you'd expect, considering it was made by Pokemon series developer Game Freak, and a surprising amount of skill strategy to to it as well. Also cute you can adopt a horse named Fireboy, which <laughs> Nick and I do in the video post a above. Godspeed, Fireboy. <laughs> That's funny stuff. That one was a lot more short than that. I know this one's over a week old. I think this was Friday or Saturday when a commercial came out. I was going to do a reaction review to it, but it was only like a minute and a half. And that was way too short of me to do a reaction review video like I do on that side of the room compared to here. So yeah, it's super short. So this one's from VG247.com. So shout out to the people that made that. Um, there's nobody... Oh, there it is. Stephanie Nullamy. So shout out to Stephanie Nullamy for making this article. Short, sweet, and to the point, thank God. And here we go. So it says Splatoon Cousins and Splatfest host Callie Marie, aka that little joke of Calamari, are joining the Amiibo lineup. I'm not even going to get into the fan art of <laughs> a lot of their fucking artwork, even though some of it's innocent and others are a little bit more x rated. So <laughs> I'm not even going to fucking go over there with the Rule 34 shit. I'm leaving that completely out of the line. <laughs> you want to see that for yourself? Google it for Callie Marie thir Rule 34. Unless you're under 18. Do not do that show. So it says Squid Sisters, Callie Marie joined the Amiibo lineup in July. On July 8th, a Squid, the Squid Sisters will be the newest figurines added to the Ami Amiibo Splatoon series. It's funny, we just got the Kirby ones and those don't come out till like June 10th. That's wild with the King DDD, Meta Knight, um, Kirby, and Waddle Dee Amiibos. But I'm going to get to that later. And then they come out a month later in the United States over here in America, in the U North America. I think Europe, too, in Australia. I'm not sure. And Canada. So it says, on July 8th, the Squid Sisters will be the newest figurine to be added to the Amiibo School Tune Series. I just read that. Used in-game, the Inkopolis News. The Nick, yeah, that's what I said. Inkopolis News entertainers will perform for players. Also launching the same day 
<laughs> the same day are new colors of the Inkling Girl, Inkling Boy, and the new Inkling Squid figurines. Squid Sisters will not be sold in originally in North America, but be a double pack. The Orange Inkling Splatoon Squid, squid Me, but would be sold out as part of the three pack, which I already have in the background, if you, many people didn't notice with the Mewtwo one. And uh, that's pretty much all it says. So it says, sometimes we include links to other retail stores. Okay, I don't care about that. And let's get on to the final one. I was actually going to do a separate video on this, but this literally only came out a couple hours ago. Of course, it was like 5, 6 in the morning. It's like 9 o'clock by the time I'm doing this upload. So, yeah, I know I'm a little late on it, but you know what? My real life of reality, the world of my working, my two jobs and all that, that always comes first. That's what keeps me surviving. Puts food on the table and all that, along with my advertisements on YouTube. That's just stuff on the side that I do. Which I'm doing right now. So it says, <laughs> new Pokemon Sun and Moon information coming out May 10th of next week. That's some pretty big ass overhyped news. I was hyping the fuck out when I heard about Junichi Masuda tweeting about this. And I'm so fucking happy it was. Woo! <laughs> Let's go, man. I was super hyped when I heard about this. So shout out to Timus Whitehead. I think I heard about a couple of his articles before and read them to you guys. So here we go. So it says, Eager fans have been waiting for the news of Pokemon Sun and Moon since it's revealed, with practically no details earlier this year. These games are not only vital to the 3DS fortunes of this year, but also bringing a hype to only new Pokemon fan titles that can be. The wait for the information is coming to an end, however, we already knew that Koro Koro Magazine, or Koro Koro Magazine as I like to pronounce it, because, you know, me being Latino and all that shit. <laughs> But whatever, it's kind of like a Japanese accent too. Koro Koro, or Koro Koro, however you want to pronounce it, magazine will have a huge scoop in mid-May. But, Game Freak is going to go ahead with the reveals on its own. Okay. Series director, one of those biggest gods in this world, next to uh, another late Mr. Iwata was, in my own personal opinion, Nintendo related stuff. Jinuchi Masuda, Jinuchi Masuda, I don't know, or Jinuchi Masuda, as promised, information on <laughs> as promised information on May 10th, starting at 9 p.m. in Japan, which is oh, this is gonna be a pain in the ass for me since I live right next to California and I'm in the fucking Nevada. This unfortunately applies to me because it's a 5 a.m. West Coast Pacific time, and that's the fucking time I'm in. I'm gonna wake my ass up super early that fucking day. That's a bummer, but it's kind of kicking the balls. But whatever, I'll do it. You know, I'm gonna be half asleep by to a fucking zombie, but. Uh, I digress. I will fucking wake up that early. So it says um, May 10th at 5 p.m. Pacific time, and I usually wake up 7, 8 o'clock before I start work anyways at 10, so that's all good. Yeah. <clears throat> May... Let me read that again. Junichi Masuda has promised information on May 10th at 9 p.m. in Japan, which is 5, 8, 5 a.m. West Coast Pacific time and 8 a.m. Eastern Standard time, 1 p.m. UK time and 2 p.m. CET. I don't know what CET is, but whatever. Telling, tellingly, he published a tweet in English as well as Japanese. This is the one I heard earlier this morning. New hashtag Pokemon Sun and Moon information will be revealed on May 10th at around 2100 JST. Stay tuned, everybody. And that's 4,000 retweets. It probably has like 10 million by now. And 4 million like favorites instead of 3,000 like we have here. So it says it's not clear how the information will be revealed, but a video, not necessarily live streamed, seems to be a decent bet. Are you excited for this information earlier this week? Ne earlier next week, excuse me. Let us know in the comments below. With thanks to Benson for the heads up. So yeah, overall thoughts, views, and opinions, let me get in the first thing. <laughs> let me get to the matter at hand. The whole cartridge system with the Nintendo series that's going on with the NX, if that does actually happen, I doubt it's going to be a spoiler thing. I think they were talking about the little microchips that they were going on for the NX. That's my whole little prediction and summon, summonment, <laughs> however you want to say it. That's my whole little prediction, thoughts, views, and opinions on that little scenario. But I will say this. If they start going back to the dinosaur age with Nintendo, they start going with the NX. I mean, it's going to be a lot less louder with the disc era because they're taking like 20-something years steps back. The last time I played one of those was like 2000, 2001. Back when I was around 11, 12 at that time. Holy shit. I'm old as fuck now, because I'm almost 30 in another two and a half more years. But I remember as a 90s kid, I used to play those a lot. Never really had a lot of issues with them, but I know they had a lot of, like, they had a lot less information, a lot less disk space when you used the cartridges back in the day. 
So it's really, really fucking pathetic that um, Nintendo's doing that type of thing. I don't know what source of operation Nintendo in Japan is probably the one that decided to talk about this thing. It's really, really unfortunate that they're taking a step back with this. Good news is it's going to be a lot less a lot less noisy compared to how the Sony PS3 PS4 sounds like a fucking jet engine goes like that. That I, I really don't want that to happen at all, period. So on the, good, on the flip side, if this does end up becoming a reality for the NX next year in March of the revealing next year for 2017 for the NX, it's going to be a couple issues. <laughs> some heads are going to turn, some people are going to catch in a positive way, others are going to be in negative light. Me, I'm kind of like on a mix, I'm on the fences of this um, thing about Nintendo actually going with this decision and going on with the pathway of this road <laughs> versus the decision to be officially confirmed, which I doubt that's going to happen, but I think they're just talking about the microchips and the AMD and all the software and hardware um, predicaments. I'm not really much of a technical guy, but I do know about stuff like that from my past since I got my degree for like um, computer engineering a couple of years ago, not too long ago. So I kind of know about stuff here and there, just about motherboard engine and CPU stuff, cooling fan systems and all that. But other than that, <laughs> if it has anything to do with the internal process stuff, like ISP stuff, then that's okay. I'm cool with it. But it has actually has something to do with the physical cartridge, putting it into the game and playing it. That's going to be a little bit of an issue because it's going to hold less memory. You're going to have to use the memory card system again, which we haven't had that since, like, well, 2004 or 05 with the PS2 era, Xbox era, and um, the Nintendo GameCube era, early, mid-2000s. So it's been about, what, let's see, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, about... 11, give or take, 11, 12 years since we had that type of system, that's going to be a bad look on the NX. I'm just saying, just putting it out there. Back in my crazy, stupid-ass teen years. Holy shit. <laughs> now let's go into the second thing. Pocket card jockey, I'm just going to keep it source to the point. That's more of like a time-waster thing if you're going to go to some big, giant event like at the mall or the, some singing concert at the airport. I don't know, Super Bowl Sunday type of thing, basketball, football game. If you want to waste your time let's playing a little game like that, which still doesn't appeal to me too much, I do like the little hidden Easter bags where it says, gotta race them all. Of course, it's obviously a Game Freak reference to Pokemon. That was really, really decent. I like that little um, capability of you, like, doing the online score thing together. I mean, the online <laughs> online capabilities are really, really nice. You get to race against a whole, whole other little horses and everything. <laughs> and it's cute and adorable and all that, especially for a lot of girls. I'm probably going to love the shit out of that. It's almost like My Little Pony on steroids. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> That's what Pocket Car Jockey looks like. I feel like Game Freak got a couple hints from Hasbro a little bit in DHX Entertainment and um, took some of their ideas and made it into their own. They like Japanese and they Pokemon re redefined the Pokemon reason for like um, the whole breeding thing. They still have the whole breeding mechanic system and this Pocket Card <laughs> Jockey game, which is really, really funny as fuck. I find that to be extremely hilarious, but you know what? I digress. You know, it's kind of a game that. Any people want to play it when you're going on business trips or some real special occasion or anything for real life situational matters, this is definitely the game for you. But if you don't care about puzzle games or Minesweeper games like this, like I don't, then don't pick up this game. And the last two things I really want to talk about, the Splatoon Amiibo, obviously I just got the other one like two months ago. You can see it right there behind me, <laughs> as you can clearly see plain as day, hopefully you can. Oh man, the Callie Maria thing. It's funny because, like I said before, I'll say it again earlier in the video, they already had Kirby, Meta Knight, DDD, King DDD, and uh, Waddle D. He's the first brand new one that came out because they already had those three times already. This is the fourth time they make an Amiibo appearance again. It's just absolutely insane. <laughs> that means there's going to be six of them. Not four, but six new Amiibos that are going to be coming out this summer. And I really want to fucking pick them up all. Pick all of them up so I can do an unboxing for you guys. Of course, I'm already going to re-glue it together and put it back in the box but still this is a huge ass kicking the balls in a way because my wall is going to be completely broke after it's going to be like 120 200 dollars all together if i want to pre-order this thing and i don't have that type of money i mean i still do have it i just got to keep it for bills and taxes but would have been under 200 dollars i would have got financial situations a bit sometimes and uh yeah cali maria let's talk about the details really quick as you guys can clearly see plain as day. <laughs> it's actually really, really crazy that they did this. Um, I'm surprised they didn't have, like, a, I know it's supposed to be a dual, bio dual pack. And um, this is completely off topic because I was actually going to do a reaction video. It's, like, 25 minutes long. It's almost a half hour long. They actually had, like, some Vocaloid, like, hologram Japanese theme um, <laughs> singing concert for Callie Marie. And they actually put them in hologram form. They started singing. I really want to do a reaction review second to that. I haven't seen it myself, but... Bet your ass I'm still going to do a re reaction review video, content review segment, <laughs> vlog, for that specific day. 
can't do it right now because I'm extremely tired. This along with another video I'm going to do after this is going to be my last ones. I already did six of them today. This is almost like my seventh or eighth one soon. And my voice starting right now as you can clearly see unfortunately folks, ladies and gentlemen. And my younger viewers out there, my older ones. It is what it is. Ugh. <laughs> I actually did a little hologram thing and that's really, really cool and amazing. I only saw like maybe 10 seconds of it as a preview and I stopped it there because I wanted to save it for the rest of my reaction review second. I don't want to think it was fake or anything. My reactions are definitely 110%, million percent legit. So as far as the Cali Maria descriptions, like as far as their like design goes, a really, really cool spot. Hashtag King Cali. I love Cali a lot more than Maria. Marie, she's not that cool. She's way too fancy and stuck up. I don't like the short hair type of thing. I like the long squid hair a lot more than the short hair ones. <laughs> I'm just saying, just putting it out there. Especially love the hell out of the music. Absolutely fantastic. And then the best badass evil villainous chick themes, um, evil villain bosses ever to come out in Nintendo Cisco in the past almost 20 something years. So it's like maybe the Pikmin and Beautiful Joe era. And that was a long ass time ago, might I add. And then last but not least, the cream of the crop, the golden pendulum, the platinum freaking news of this um, video, I want to talk about Pokemon Sun and Moon, which is coming out May 10th, the, well, not the official games, that's not until like the end of this year, November, December, probably. I'm finally glad we're finally getting information from this thing, thank God. I'm going to want to hear about new sources information, I don't have to go on Koto Koto Magazine and put all these fake little images for you guys so you guys can see it for your own enjoyment, but <laughs> I'm so fucking happy, it's about time Mr. Junichi Masuda, shout out to him, I doubt if you're watching the video. Thank you so much. You're one of the most kindest, humblest man. Even though I never met you in real life, I hope I do. If I ever go to the orchestra, Pokemon orchestrated things or TCG competitions, if they ever, ever have one here in Vegas, I will definitely go. And the closest ones, I know they usually have is way out there in Texas. It's 12 hours away from me driving. And then the California one is a lot more shorter, like four hours away. But everything's super expensive over there, so I can't really afford that. Texas one, I probably could, but just with the gas money, it's going to bite me in the ass. But other than that, <laughs> man, I'm so happy. I actually made some short special announcement. It's finally going to happen, May 10th. I'm doing this um, recording at <laughs> Friday, so that's a Tuesday. That kind of sucks ass. I'm just going to have to ask one of my bosses or whatever I can have the day off that day so I can do some new speculation videos. Hopefully they accept it because my freaking vacation is until July. So I still got two months left, but it's probably going to count one of my days for vacation, but I don't care. I'll sacrifice one just to do a video for you guys. I'm really, really excited to see what's going to happen there. Hopefully there's, there's new speculation of Mega Evolutions. I really want to see that in Fusion Evolutions. I hope that Mr. Masuda makes that an actual thing. Please make that an official real mechanic for Sun and Moon. I want to hear that. I want to hear about Mega Flygon if we ever are ever going to get a taste of him. Or Mega Milotic. That's something I'm super hyped as fuck to hear about. Hopefully that's one of the new speculations we're going to get. Or we finally get a game trailer. And I hope to God that's actually true because I don't want to wake up for 5 a.m. for nothing because I'm going to be half asleep by the time this thing comes out. And all you guys in the East Coast out there in New York and New Jersey and all those other little states out there in the Eastern area here in the United States, you guys are probably going to be up in, <laughs> up in Adam real early. And all you guys in the UK and the United Kingdom, you're probably going to be up like nothing because it's probably still going to be, what, 7, 8 o'clock over there by the time um, <laughs> the news hits you guys. It'll be like maybe an hour right before it's turns dark. I don't know how the, um, <laughs> the time zone system works. I only know about it here in the United States. I don't know how the other places in the world work. Just here. So I'm going to have to Google that shit. Or Yahoo or Bing it. <laughs> or AOL if anyone still uses that crappy ass conundrum of a system. So there's that. Maybe there'll be brand new Pokeballs, brand new Pokemons, brand new evolutions. I really want to listen about that if that ends up being possible. Maybe he'll announce something about Pokemon Go, Go, Go Beta. And uh, maybe he'll have some sort of connection with Sun and Moon because it says this time, everything comes all together into one generation. Because they showed all 721 Pokemon, which is 722 with Magiana and Magirna. That man, he better have something really, really big up his sleeve. Hopefully he doesn't troll the crap out of us like he did before last month in April. Because if he does, ugh, that's really going to piss me the flying hell off. Seriously, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully Mr. Masuda knows what he's doing. Brains of the operation along with his other... um. Game Freak developers or devs and this whole team and corporation of people at Nintendo and Game Freak. Hopefully they know what the hell they're doing. And Nintendo Japan, please do something perfect. Maybe they'll have a brand new um, me mechanism for like Sundial Moon or something like that. Maybe they'll finally show Zygarde as a Titan form. That's something I really want to hear about 
as an update for Pokemon Sun and Moon. Hopefully they'll bring that sun there. And more like background history in Volcanium besides the movie um, aspect of him coming out. And Magearna. And my voice is completely almost shattered. So I'm going to stop it here. Links to the script about down below to all four of these articles, session reviews, and um, article segments on all their websites and everything else. All the good stuff. And on the annotation outside the one that you saw earlier. And I'm done here. Peace out once again, bros and members of Hexes. I will see you when I see you guys. Good day, have a good night. Wherever you are around the world, don't drink smoothie at the same time. Don't take it reckless. Keep it calm, keep it cool, keep it chill, keep it electric out there. And until the next time, guys, um, peace out, ladies and bye. Stay tuned more videos coming soon. Brand new videos on channels every single day. Stay in grind, stay, 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 stay healthy. Be easy for you to do it yourself. Peace out, my sauerkraut. I'm gone again. I'm out of here. Stay tuned more future content channels. Stay tuned more updates. Peace out, ladies and bye. I'm out like sauerkraut. I'm gone again. I'm out of here. Um, stay tuned more future content channels. Stay tuned more updates. Stay safe, everyone. Stay tuned more future content and this updates on this series of this channel, vlogging channel. And I will talk to you guys soon. Ladies, goodbye, peace, and I will see you guys later. I'm out, and uh, hopefully all this news is true. It has to be officially confirmed, except for the Pokemon one and the Nintendo One X. That's Splatoon one, and the other one has got to be 110% real. Pocket jockey thing. Ladies and goodbye. Deuces.